Hi everyone, this is part 2 of the video Osteitis Fibrosa Cystica in Chronic Kidney Disease. As you can see that in the part 1 of the video I had discussed topics A and B that is parathormone functions in chronic kidney disease and in this video I would be discussing pathophysiology and the disease Osteitis Fibrosa Cystica itself. So let's quickly move on to part C that is pathophysiology of Osteitis Fibrosa Cystica in chronic kidney disease. So Yes, so let's assume that a patient is suffering from chronic kidney disease, okay? If the patient is suffering from chronic kidney disease, the GFR is going to be low in this patient. I had explained why the GFR would be low in my previous video, okay? So, if the GFR is low, do you understand that the phosphate won't be excreted out? So, the phosphate excretion would be reduced and because the phosphate excretion is reduced, what would occur? Phosphate would be retained in the body. Phosphate retention would occur or you can say that the phosphate levels would increase. Okay. And this phosphate levels would in turn do what? It would be stimulating two things. Number one, it would be stimulating the osteocytes to produce FGF23 that is fibroblast growth factor 23. And number two, it would be stimulating the parathormon. As I had explained the normal function of parathormone, what would parathormone do? It would absorb the calcium in return for phosphate. So it would excrete phosphate. And what would FGF23 do? It would also excrete the phosphate. So now you understand that why were the osteocytes being stimulated and why was PTH being stimulated in chronic kidney disease? Yes, very much. So what would they do? They would excrete the phosphate out of your body. So phosphate excretion is what they do. Now, on the other limb, what we can say that in chronic kidney disease, the enzyme 1-alpha-hydroxylase is also low, right? I had discussed about this enzyme again in the previous video. You can go and have a look at it if you want, right? So, 1-alpha-hydroxylase is reduced because of chronic kidney disease. Also, this increase in the phosphate would reduce 1-alpha-hydroxylase levels. Also, the FGF23 which is produced would also go and inhibit 1-alpha-hydroxylase. So, these three mechanisms would reduce the enzyme and if this enzyme is reduced, do you understand that vitamin D2 won't be converted into vitamin D3, right? So, vitamin D3 levels would be reduced. And if vitamin D3 is reduced, will it be able to absorb calcium from the intestine? No. So again, what would happen? The serum calcium levels would go down. And what would this do in turn? As the serum calcium levels go down, they would again stimulate parathormone because the function of parathormone, as I explained, is to absorb the calcium and raise the calcium levels in the body, right? So they would again go and stimulate Parathor, parathormone, right? So, what is happening in chronic kidney disease? Can you understand that parathormone is being stimulated, which means the parathormone levels are being raised in the body, right? Now, let me take you for a moment to our next topic, which is osteitis fibrosa cystica itself, okay? So, if I take you over here, osteitis fibrosa cystica is what? It is nothing but it is an advanced skeletal manifestation of hyperparathyroidism right it is an advanced skeletal manifestation of hyperparathyroidism so what have i done i have connected the two pathologies that is chronic kidney disease and i have explained why would parathyroidism occur in a chronic kidney disease hyperparathyroidism and this Hyperparathyroidism would manifest as osteitis fibrosa cystica, right? Now, because of hyperparathyroidism, what happens is, I had explained the normal function of, hyper, uh, of parathyroid hormone, that they would be stimulating what? They would be stimulating the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts, right? Both of them would be stimulated. So, what happened? The bone turnover is increased, right? What do you mean by the bone turnover? The rate of formation to the rate of resorption that is increased, right? The bone turnover is increased. So the bone is 
forming very fast and it's getting resorbed very fast so what happens in turn since the bone turnover is increased do you understand that the bone is getting destroyed the matrix is getting destroyed right matrix destruction is occurring and matrix destruction or the inflammation would be healed by what mechanisms by fibrous invasion and by vascular invasion right fibrous and vascular invasion and now because there's an inflammation of the bone what am i calling it osteitis because there's a fibrous invasion i'm calling it fibrosa right and this vascular invasion which occurred vascular invasion if blood vessels would invade what would come hemoglobin and hemoglobin over the period would convert into what hemosiderin right this hemosiderin gives it the brown color right so this was also known as the brown tumor right and if a cystic degeneration occurs in this brown tumor a cystic degeneration occurs then what would be the disease known as the disease would known as osteitis fibrosa cystica right and why am i calling it cystica now you can understand it's because there's a cystic degeneration right so this is how osteitis fibrosa cystica would occur now again to summarize let's see that chronic in a chronic kidney disease there would be a state of hyperparathyroidism and this hyperparathyroidism would increase the turnover of the bone and this increase in the turnover would result in osteitis fibrosa cystica remember that osteitis fibrosa cystica is an advanced skeletal manifestation of hyperparathyroidism which means that it can occur in other conditions also where there is hyperparathyroidism right and number second point which you need to understand is that the bone manifestations of chronic kidney disease is not only osteitis fibrosa cystica there are many other manifestations also which could be a low bone turnover disease or it could be a dynamic bone disease but what i have dealt over here is only osteitis fibrosa cystica right so this is what you need to understand now um so here we come to the end of the video and thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel if you liked it